You know, analytics of viewing habits tell us that some of you, quite unbelievably actually, uh, will have left us within 90 seconds. So before some of you head off, allow me to say something that's so important. If there's only one takeaway from this morning's sermon, let it be this. It is to say that we believe that black lives matter. For those of you who are still with us, today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, to chapter 10, verse 8. This reading that we have today comes to us hot on the heels of the Great Commission that we had in our Matthew 28 passage last Sunday. You remember that's the moment where Jesus sends the disciples out and says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. We're also sharing this particular passage today on what's in our church is World Church Sunday. And also, of course, we're all so mindful of the brutal killing of George Floyd and the protests that have been the expression of global outrage and the affirmation that black lives matter. So with all these three things forming the backcloth of our thoughts today. It probably won't surprise you that if my eyes were going to alight on any verse in particular, that verse would be chapter 9 verse 37, where Jesus says these words, the harvest is plentiful, but the work is a few. But when you think about it, you might ask yourself the question, well, what is the harvest anyway? And who is part uh, of the harvest? Well, you can answer your own question, actually, if you allow your eyes to move down the page to chapter 10, verse 8. And there we uh, find the very people to whom Jesus is sending uh, the disciples as he sends them out on, on mission. And he makes it very clear, doesn't he? He says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, drive out demons. We probably read this passage so many times that it could almost skim off us uh, to some extent. Uh, the realisation of the very fact that those people that Jesus regarded as harvest, his adversaries, whom he'll later describe as wolves in the uh, later parts of chapter 10, his ver adversaries, they regarded these people as chaff. Jesus regards them as harvest, they regard them as only so much chaff. A definition uh, on Google uh, telling you that these are people who are worthless, uh, literally rubbish. They're, treated as chaff. And whether it's for religious reasons, whether for political motives, whether it's for racial prejudice, whether it's for cultural difference, whenever you describe someone as chaff, you're not going to have a mission to them. And unlike Jesus in the early part of our passage, neither are you going to have compassion upon them. So for the wolves, rather than the sheep, the wolves won't be having a mission to the people they regard as, as chaff. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Why would we have a mission to you? The only reason why you're sick or you're dead is because you must have done something wrong and this is the way that God punishes you. Cleanse those with leprosy? Not likely. I'm not going to be going anywhere near you. I don't understand hygiene. Uh, it's too early for me. We haven't got that science. But I will tell you this, that if I come into contact with you, I'll be made ritually unclean and I won't be able to uh, officiate or attend religious services. And drive out demons? Well, anybody can tell, can't they, that once you demonise somebody... 
uh, you can really use that to your own political advantage. Uh, if you don't believe me, as Jesus himself, who was accused of being in league with the devil. And if you don't believe me, ask all those aspirational women over the centuries who were burned to death uh, as witches. Uh, it's so easy to demonize people for uh, political ends. Those people that Jesus regarded as harvest, his adversaries regarded as chaff. And as long as they did so, there was never going to be a harvest for the world. A few weeks ago, the world was shocked and outraged to watch video footage of four American police officers involved in the brutal killing of a black man named George Floyd. And as we watched that video, we realise that this is the kind of thing that you get when for so long, over the centuries, and systemically, black people have not been regarded as part of the harvest, but they've been regarded as chaff, dispensable, disposable, ready to be killed in the way that George Floyd was. It, it's the kind of thing that happens when you don't truly believe that black lives matter. One of the things though, is that even after watching that video, and even after all the protests in so many cities across the world over the last fortnight, it's really so difficult, even for well-meaning, well-intentioned people, uh, to get the point. And you know this is true because you'll hear people say something like this. Well, of course black lives matter because all lives matter. If you hear anybody say those words, you will know that even now they don't get it. It's not enough to say, of course black lives matter because all lives matter because not all lives have been subject to transfer, transportation and slavery. Not all lives have been hung from trees like Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit. Not all lives have been intentionally disenfranchised. Not all lives will be shot down in a suburb while out jogging simply for being the wrong colour. Not all lives will find it difficult to get justice in the courts. Not all lives will struggle for equal opportunities and be the victims of unconscious bias. So it's not particularly true to say, well, of course, all black lives matter because all lives matter. The other morning, it's half past seven in the morning, I did something that I don't often do really, but I turned the news on on my phone and started watching uh, the news programme uh, from the BBC. And it just happened that when I turned it on, they were interviewing a famous interviewer named Martin Bashir. And he was talking about a, a schools programme that he's prepared, something about celebrities uh, doing homeschooling, goes out on a, a morning at 9.25. And his particular uh, lesson was based on Martin Luther King Jr. And one of the things that he was saying, because of course they, they got onto the subject of Black Lives Matter, uh, one of the things he, he was saying was that Martin Luther King Jr., used to promote an ancient truth, to use Martin Bashir's words, that all lives matter because all human beings are created in the image of God. And that was Martin Luther King's way of saying that all human beings are valuable and all human beings have worth. And of course, there is some truth in that. Of course there is. But where it falls down, if you put too much weight upon it, is that it diminishes and trivialises the sentence, Black Lives Matter. And you'll never stop trivialising that sentence until you stop saying all lives matter because, uh, sorry, Black Lives Matter because all lives matter. 
you'll only really get the point when you can say these words. All lives don't matter until black lives matter. That's such an important sentence that it's worth me repeating it. All lives don't matter until black lives matter. Just before Jesus said the words about the harvest being plentiful, but the workers being few, Matthew tells us that he'd looked at the crowd and he had compassion on them. I love the Greek word for compassion uh, because it contains within it in the Greek, uh, the Greek word for bells. It, it appears that the, the Hebrews uh, didn't experience compassion in the heart. Uh, they can uh, experience it in their gut. Very difficult for us to uh, come to terms with that. We, we know the phrase uh, of someone hating someone's guts. We don't often hear people saying, I love you with my guts. We tend to say, I love you with my heart, don't we? Not, I love you with my guts. I guess the nearest thing we'd get to it uh, would be to say that he looked at the crowds and he was sick to the stomach of all the suffering that they had to endure. Perhaps we will never get to the point of knowing that black lives matter until we are sick to the stomach of the suffering that so many black lives have had to endure, not only over the centuries, uh, but today. And amazingly, it is today. Uh, last week, I let the cat out of the bag uh, when I revealed uh, that one of my great loves in life is, is pop music. So now you know that, it won't surprise you that I can't think of the phrase harvest for the world uh, without thinking of a black family who went by the name of the Isley Brothers, who released a record called Harvest for the World in May 1976. And 44 years later, after the singing of that song, George Floyd was brutally killed on video in front of the whole world. I wonder how many times those officers had ever played the Isley Brothers song in their cars and I wonder if they'd ever listened to the words and if they had, I wonder what a difference it would have made. Here are the words to the song. All babies together, everyone a seed. Half of us are satisfied, half of us in need. Love's bountiful in us, tarnished by our greed. When will there be a harvest for the world? A nation planted, so concerned with gain. As the seasons come and go, greater grows the pain. And far too many feeling the strain. When will there be a harvest for the world? Gather every man, gather every woman. Celebrate your lives and give thanks for your children. Gather everyone, gather all together, overlooking none, hoping life gets better for the world. Dress me off for battle when all I want is peace. Those of us who pay the price come home with the least. Nation after nation turning into beast. When will there be a harvest for the world? Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And there'll always be too few workers, as long as so many people in the world think that other human beings can be treated like chaff, worthless and rubbish and disposable. There will always be too few workers, 
until there comes the day when we are sick to the stomach of the suffering that black men, black women, black children endure. Will you step forward? Will you become one of the workers that Jesus needs for a harvest for the world? And not only say, but act and breathe the black lives matter.